the Earth has been running experiments since it formed. We can go back into the rocks and we can pick through them and we can look for the evidence and try and parse out how life works. You have to be really excited about paleontology or earth sciences or life sciences. That's what, that's what gets you up in the morning when it's really cold or really hot, um, gets you out to the field. My name is Joe Sertich. I'm the curator of dinosaurs at the Denver Museum. We're here at the Sandy site, which is in the Hell Creek Formation. It's the last little blip of dinosaurs right before they go extinct. It's one of the best places on Earth to dig dinosaurs because you get complete skulls, you get complete skeletons. One of the things that doesn't change, you never get tired of, is finding the fossil. You're the first person to crack that rock open, and whether it's a plant or a turtle bone or a T-Rex tooth, you get that goosebump feeling. You're the first person to ever see that fossil. Got another bone. They're just shooting out of the hill here. I found a mammal femur. It could be um, Triceratops or Hadrosaur ungle, so it's part of the, the digits on the foot. I spent all day yesterday digging up a pit and I didn't find anything. This bone is definitely the best thing I've found in the last two weeks. Ben just uncovered a shin bone, it's called a tibia, of a small meat-eating dinosaur called a theropod. After coming back this morning and smashing a lot of rocks with the rock hammer, I finally eventually got some fossils I caught too today. We're finding lizards, we're finding turtles, we're finding snakes. And just two days ago, we found one of the rarest turtles in the Hell Creek, which is a huge tortoise-like turtle called Basilemus. As I started digging on it, it just kept going and kept going and kept going, and it would never end. The site usually produces little tiny things, less than an inch long, and suddenly we have this big four-foot-wide turtle. And this is probably more of a land-based turtle. It's not surprising, it's mixed in with dinosaurs and other things that lived on land. That's it. That's the good stuff. So we had to do some serious excavation, which is fun for the crew. We got to do some plastering and we got to do some heavy duty digging. And by the end of the day, we'll have it flipped and out of here. And for me, doing paleontology is, I, I love the dinosaurs. I love looking at fossils. I love learning about the earth, the earth's history. But a really big component of that is working with people. And I can guide them along that same journey that I'm on. And we can learn about a site together. Two, three. Oh, Beauty. Yay. Nice. Woo. I'm an alumnus of CSU. I was a geoscientist uh, for my, my bachelor's degree. It's gonna be hard to cut this one open. So I've been working with the geosciences department to make some opportunities available to students to come out and actually get involved with digs. He has kind of a dream job. He gets to go out in the field and, and publish and do research, and that's kind of the perfect situation for somebody that's interested in doing this sort of stuff. So seeing that it can be done is pretty awesome. What CSU did was set me up for success as a field paleontologist. I would say more than anything, being able to go out and look at rocks and not just see a rock face, but actually paint a picture of what was going on when that rock was deposited, um, the history, the sequence of events. I think CSU's geosciences degree really made me comfortable in the field. And I don't know if I would have gotten that anywhere else. Today was great. We got one of the largest turtles from this formation and the, definitely the largest fossil from this site ever collected. So all together, we've probably collected somewhere around three or 400 bones that will end up at the museum in our, in our permanent collections. and knowing like where it can go from here, like all the way back to the museum, and knowing that you like contributed to finding it is really cool. Paleontology is important, at least from my perspective. Looking back in time allows you to understand the present and potentially make inference about what's gonna happen in the future.